Hi, I'm Lou. I keep hearing that these inverter microwaves are better than the old coil microwaves, and today we'll find out if that's true. This particular inverter microwave is 1200 watts and our conventional is only 1000, but we're doing all low power testing and not going anywhere near those maximums, so it won't make any difference. Try a frozen hamburger. First, the inverter microwave. Defrost, one pound, go. It looks like it's cooking it for five minutes. Starting to thaw, but definitely still frozen in the middle. Here's the bottom side and it cooked a little bit, but not too bad. After an extra 60 seconds at power level three, which is defrost. Here it is after two minutes, I rotate it between goes and this time still not quite there. Okay, there we are after a total of eight minutes on the inverter. Moved it to a plate and we'll clean and cool this so we can use the exact same pan. Conventional microwave. After 11 minutes, nope. 12 minutes, 13 minutes, 14 minutes, 15 minutes, 16 minutes, and yeah, I guess we're finally there. So both microwaves did a good job thawing the meat and not cooking it, but the inverter did it in half the time, only eight minutes here versus 16 here. This gas burner will help us explain the difference. A conventional microwave can only go on full power. So if you're trying to fry an egg in this pan, you'd have to heat it up for a little bit and then stop and then heat it up for a little bit and stop so you didn't burn the egg. An inverter microwave is capable of turning its heat down to just the right level so it can cook the egg constantly and more efficiently. Now let's try melting chocolate. First the inverter. We'll take the power level all the way down to three. Set 60 seconds of cook time and go. Not quite melted yet. That's after the second minute. After three minutes, we're completely melted and no burning. Conventional microwave, not melted at all. Still pretty hard, still just not getting very far. I ran for two minutes and now we're starting to get somewhere. So after a total of six minutes on power level three, we finally got it. No difference in the end results, but the inverter does it twice as fast. Popcorn in the inverter, conventional. Okay, so they're almost the same. It's just the inverter popped a little bit better in the same amount of time. Probably just leave the conventional a little bit longer and it would do okay too. To be fair, this is probably more about higher wattage than the inverter. Now we'll do a loudness test on both. A quiet room is 45 decibels. The inverter cooking water is 66 decibels. And now the conventional is about 62 decibels. Those numbers are confirming what we're hearing in the kitchen. This is somewhat louder, but not a big deal. I've heard there's a problem where inverter microwaves can mess with your internet. Let's see if that's true. The microwave's running and the video is streaming just fine with no buffering on Wi-Fi, so I think it's not a problem. Inverter microwaves claim to be bigger on the inside than the standard microwave. These are both 20 inches wide. The standard is 13 inches wide inside and the inverter is 13 and a half. So for example, one of my wife's favorite casserole dishes will not fit in here, but it barely does fit in here. So in final analysis, inverter microwaves thaw meat and melt chocolate twice as fast, do slightly better with popcorn, are a little wider and a little louder. I see no evidence that they mess with Wi-Fi. Overall, I think inverter microwaves are better. Thanks for watching.